phones that breaking news uh, from the upstate where one inmate is dead. Let's go ahead and listen in to the press conference underway in Pickens County. We don't want to infringe on what she's doing. Uh, also, kind of uh, housekeeping here, our, our victim is a very private person, does not want to be contacted or speak to the media. Uh, you, you can imagine what kind of what she's going through today, and we ask that you just respect her, respect her privacy and help us with that. Uh, kind of going along the timeline of this, this is a kind of a rarity in Pickens County, so we want to make sure everybody understands. Uh, 2.35 to say around 2.40 this morning, a.m., two or three uh, county inmates detained Pickens County prisoners of, of an assault and overtake the detention area that they were in at that time in a premeditated plan to escape from the prison out there. Uh, both of the detention officers were injured during the attack, and the two uh, inmates escape from the facility. Around 2.53, 02.53 this morning, the Sheriff's Office gets a 911 call and receives notice of the incident and, and what's going on out at the stockade or the prison farm, we still call it around here, prison facility. And a scene, and everybody was on their way there. We were in the area within four minutes. thought that was a great response on our part. So the responding deputies have served one of the escapees, uh, later identified as Tim, Timmy Deal, Timothy Cleveland Deal, just a short distance from the facility on Concord Church Road. And he was taken into custody right there, run down by one of our deputies. Uh, as, as that was going on, the uh, arrest is still occurring with Deal. A female homeowner on Meese Mill Road calls 911 also and reports that an unknown subject has kicked in her back door to the residence and that she has shot him. The female resident is home alone when this occurs. Uh, around 304, deputies arrived at the caller's home and located a gunshot victim inside the homeowner's residence with a single gunshot to the head. The gunshot victim is dressed in prison clothing, which is orange jumpsuits type things there, and is immediately identified as a second escapee. And that's a name that we can't release at this time. But as soon as we get it, we'll make sure that y'all get it also. Uh, the uh, suspect there was flown uh, from the scene by a medical helicopter and uh, was uh, pronounced deceased at Greenwood Memorial Hospital. The homeowner was uninjured. And we say a little prayer for that. Kind of go over a, a more detail of what happened and, and what was going on last night. Uh, our initial investigation, we're still running several leads down that said, the assault on the officers and uh, the escape from the prison was premeditated and had been planned for several days, or maybe possibly weeks. Uh, prisoners in that time, in the, those type of situations have a lot of time on their hands. Not, the non-involved inmates attempted to actually rescue and aid our detention officers. So I think that speaks to our detention officers who've built a relationship with these people, but some of them came to their, their rescue and I thought that was a good thing. Uh, the burglary and shooting part of it enters gained the homeowner's residence by force. The evidence at the scene confirms that the back door was kicked in and the escapee was near the homeowner's bedroom door when the, the escapee was shot. I was out there last night, you walk in the back and the rooms are very small and right there and there's not a lot of room in that area. So the evidence scene suggests that the escapee had armed himself with a metal knife sharpening tool, a lot pretty large a sharpening tool, probably over a foot or right at a foot, that belonged to the homeowner. The tool was recently located in the kitchen area, just feet away from where she was sleeping. The homeowner had no other escape uh, a route to get out of there because of the size and the layout of the house. Uh, one shot was fired from a handgun that is owned by the resident. There's no relationship between these two, never met in their life. The homeowner is an adult female that was home alone when the incident occurred. The homeowner is a trained CWP holder and can legally possess a weapon. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Our preliminary conclusion today is the homeowner is a victim of forced entry in her residence in the middle of the night by a convicted felon. And he was an escapee from the Pickens County Prison 
armed with a improvised weapon and the victim was trapped in her, her, her home and in her bedroom. The victim was in fear for her life to use, and she used lethal force to protect herself. The Sheriff's Office has not uncovered any evidence or information in any way that will suggest anything different. Kind of legal review of what happened from now is uh, we'll continue wrapping up our case today and tomorrow. We got some of our uh, detention officers who were hurt. We want to get detailed statements from them and follow up anything else that comes in. And once we do that, we'll turn it over to the 13th Circuit solicitor and they'll review it for any charges or any further charges or, or feedback on the whole process. I said the escape, uh, escapee Timothy Deal is facing several additional charges filed against him by the Sheriff's Office to include the escape and assaults on the detention officers. So that's things we're following up with today. But I think the main thing that I get out of this is, first of all, our people were on scene within four minutes. Our dispatch did great. <clears throat> Everybody on scene did great. But to, the one thing I want to stress in this is, especially females, is get your CWP. Be trained in the, your weapon. Shoot it often at the local range or where you can. But this is the shining example of what this lady did, took the time to get her CWP and set herself up to be able to protect herself and not be harmed, killed, or raped or whatever. She came out on the good on this end and the other guy, the bad guy, didn't. 